So, oops, I want to move on to chapter two. Um, this is our view of the sky. So we'll talk about some of this stuff before. I know that, you, you know, I did send an announcement to make sure that you do the reading before class. Um, if you haven't today, don't worry. Uh, but as you'll see, it's helpful to do the reading before class. And we'll work with some of these ideas in our in-class activity today. So our plan for this chapter is today we're going to talk about the celestial sphere and the movement of objects in the sky on the celestial sphere. Uh, and then next time we'll talk about different models of the solar system uh, from the history of astronomy and what we know now about how the solar system is laid out, which I mean, we've just talked about, but we'll talk about how we got there to that understanding. So the celestial sphere. Um, so this is an imaginary sphere that surrounds the Earth. Um, it's based on ideas that ancient astronomers had about an, a literal actual sphere, which they thought was made of crystal that surrounded the Earth and that the stars were embedded within. So even though that's an outdated idea of um, how these, you know, solar system and the stars are arranged, we still use this idea when we talk about locating objects on the sky. And that's because from our position here on Earth, this is kind of what it looks like. It looks like there's just stuff that's arranged in a big sphere around the Earth, and we can measure on that sphere using a specific coordinate system in order to point out different objects. So we say that our stars are on the sort of surface of the celestial sphere, as are the planets, as is the sun. Again, this is an imaginary construct, but it's useful. Hey. Okay, there we go. So um, the celestial sphere, there are some uh, important points to orient yourself here. So the North Celestial Pole and the South Celestial Pole are basically extensions of Earth's North and South Pole. Um, so Earth rotates about its axis around uh, its, well, axis. And if you extend the North part of that axis up, you hit the North Celestial Pole and South to South Celestial Pole. Um, the celestial equator uh, is basically if you took Earth's equator and projected it out onto the sphere, that would be the celestial equator. And um, every location on Earth has a special point called the zenith, and that is the point, uh, if you look straight up, that's your zenith. So every point on Earth has a zenith that points somewhere different on the celestial sphere. All right, so you can only see half of the sphere at any one time right, because the uh, horizon is a boundary on your viewing. So as a result, you can only see about half of the stars in the sky at any given time. Depending on where you are on Earth, you might see multiple different stars throughout the year, or you might see a more fixed viewpoint. So let's talk about those. Uh, in order to understand this a little bit better, I want to make an appeal to the Earth coordinates, right? So um, if you are measuring location on the globe, you measure your position using latitude and longitude. So latitude, latitude, flatitude, that's how my seventh grade geography teacher said it. Um, that's measured from the equator toward the north, positive, and from the equator toward the south pole in negative. So here in Eugene, I think we're at like 43 and a half degrees, so almost 45 degrees latitude. Um, and that's the kind of shorthand that I'll use for most of the time for a Northern Hemisphere observer. Uh, longitude is measured from the prime meridian in a positive direction going east. So similar to latitude, but uh, the zero point seems, I don't know, a little more arbitrary. There's no you know, natural prime meridian, um, but it goes through Greenwich, England. All right. so. As you'll notice, latitude and longitude are both angles that we use to denote a position on a spherical surface. And the celestial sphere also has similar coordinates to denote position. Instead of latitude, we have declination. So declination is measured from the celestial equator. Again, positive going north toward the north celestial pole and negative going south toward the south celestial pole. In addition to declination, we have right ascension. This is, um, a, again, more similar to longitude. It's measured around the celestial equator and it's always positive. Um, I don't remember what the zero line is called for, the, for measuring right ascension from. Um, and I don't think about it that much, to be honest with you, 
Um, but declination and right ascension, these are the angles that you would use to locate an object on the celestial sphere. So we'll do some practice with this in the activity today. So if this doesn't make sense yet, it will, I think. Okay, so quick question about the idea of declination. Remember, this is the one that's like latitude. So we have a star called Polaris, otherwise known as the North Star, so-called because it's very close to the North Celestial Pole. So based on what I just said about declination, um, what is the declination of the star Polaris? Um, I'm going to give you a poll, and it'll give you choice one, two, three, four, and five, and then zero if you feel like you're doing something else and you have no idea and you want to indicate that. So I'll give you about a minute to answer this poll. All right, I see the vast majority of votes for option one, which was positive 90 degrees. Um, that's exactly right. So. Um, if Polaris is up here by the North Celestial Pole, measured from the equator all the way up would be positive 90 degrees. So that's the, the you know, all of the angles that we are measuring have to be between zero and 90 or zero and minus 90, right? Depending on whether you're in the North or South Hemisphere. And because of this, we can use those boundaries uh, to define some special regions of sky. So the first special region is called the circumpolar region. Uh, this is highlighted here in red. Circumpolar, because circum means around, it goes around the pole that you see. So for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, our circumpolar region uh, would be about like this. Um, you can always see a star in the sky if it's in the circumpolar region. And uh, you know that you're in the circumpolar region if you're within your latitude, or 90 minus your latitude from uh, the pole. So the declination that's measured from, again, the equator, the celestial equator up. And so if that declination of a star uh, is between 90 minus your latitude and plus 90, the North Star, then you'll always see that star in the sky. Likewise, there's a region called the never rise region. These are the stars that you will never see. They will never rise above your horizon. And similarly, if your uh, declination is between uh, 90 minus your latitude and minus 90 degrees, right? You'll never see it. Uh, don't worry too much about these equations. Uh, I'll post the link to the slides and you can use these for your homework questions. Because um, for me, I just try to figure this out from logic and sketching. Um, so I don't actually have these equations written down anywhere. If you want to make an equation sheet as we go through class, though, that could be a handy thing to share with other people, too. OK, so those are the circumpolar region and never rise region. There's a third region called the rise and set region. Um, here, obviously, this is drawn for a lower latitude because our circumpolar region has become larger and our never see region is smaller. Oh, no, this is a very northern observer. So if you're not in the circumpolar region and you're not in the never rise region, then that star must rise and set throughout the year or throughout the day. OK, so there is a simulation that you can use to visualize this. But unfortunately, because Adobe Flash is no longer with us, um, you have to download an app. So if you do have the ability to download apps, you can go to this um, University of Nebraska-Lincoln website um, look for the NAAP labs. And if you download that app, then there's a simulator. Um, and that's what I use to take all these screenshots. I think it's really helpful to play with to get a visual understanding of uh, the, these never rise uh, circumpolar and rise and set regions. Okay, so if you're a visual thinker like me, play with that. If you can't, then I'm always happy to show you it in my office hours. All right, so just checking our understanding. Let's say that we have the star called Antares. Its declination is minus 26.8 degrees. And Oslo, Norway is at 60 degrees north latitude. Can you see Antares in Oslo? So let me go ahead and relaunch my poll. All right, I think that everyone is back with us. 
So we're gonna go ahead and relaunch this poll. Okay, so I see the most votes for choice number one, which is that Antares is not visible in Oslo. And since that's the most popular choice, I'm just hoping someone will explain your thinking for um, why you might choose that answer. You can share in the chat, you can unmute yourself. Wrong answers are welcome, right answers are welcome too. Okay, got it. So uh, this excellent thinking, I really like the way that you explained that. And that's kind of the way that I would go about explaining it to you. I don't think I have a lot of flat objects around here, but like you said, if, if you have some flat object and, and that's our horizon, right? Um, if we look straight up toward our zenith point, then we can obviously that see that star. And if we look down toward 90 degrees toward our horizon, then we can see those stars too, right? So if we're at 60 degrees north, then 90 degrees away from us would be negative 30 degrees, right? Um, and Terry's is at minus 26.8. And because the latitude, or sorry, declination is measured from zero degrees at the celestial equator down getting larger toward minus 90, then Antares is actually just within the rise and set region for Oslo. Um, so it's not quite at 30 degrees. So um, the line of thinking that says that it wouldn't be visible is a totally productive line. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, if, you, if you do the math, it's just barely within that region where we can see it rise and set. Um, let's see. So that zenith point is really important for orienting us, right? That's our straight ahead point. And I think this is why it's a little bit hard to understand the celestial sphere at first, because this zenith point is so critical. It's not just the North Celestial Pole, South Celestial Pole, et cetera. That zenith point determines what your sky looks like at your latitude. So if you have a star that's the same declination as your latitude, then those stars will pass through your zenith every day. And all the ones closer to the pole will be those circumpolar stars that you'll always see in the sky. Um, okay. I hope that this will make more sense if I make it visual, oops, using Stellarium. So I'm gonna show you Stellarium. Let me drop the link for you in the chat. Um, this is a planetarium app we'll use. Uh, you can use the, the web version, it's free. If you wanna download a version, you can do that, but I just use the web version myself. Um, so I wanna show you some things in Stellarium before we actually have to use it. I wanna show you about Polaris and Zenith. So since different latitudes all have their different zenith points, um, the star Polaris, the North Star, looks like it's in different declinations, or sorry, it looks like it's at different um, angles from the horizon, um, even though it's at the same declination on the celestial sphere, right? It's a fixed point on the celestial sphere near the North Celestial Pole. But where that North Celestial Pole is relative to the observer depends on your latitude. So here I've linked to a bunch of views of different points in Stellarium. Um, starting in Mexico City. So let me go ahead and show you some of those points. Get some stuff out of the way here. Okay, so starting in Mexico City, there we go. So this is our view from Mexico City. There we're looking toward the north and Polaris is a little bit up off the horizon, right? If instead we go and look in San Antonio, Texas, right? The latitude is a little bit higher. And so looking at San Antonio, Polaris is a little bit farther off the horizon. Next, we're gonna travel to Lincoln, Nebraska. Here's the view from Lincoln. Polaris a little bit farther up in the sky again. And similarly, if we go to Winnipeg, Canada, Churchill, Canada, Resolute Bay, Canada, and then the North Pole, we're gonna see Polaris higher on the, in the sky, even higher in the sky, even higher in the sky. Now the sun is here for um, Resolute Bay, Canada. And then finally uh, at the uh, North Pole, then the Polaris is actually at our zenith point. So if we look straight up and right until we can't look any straighter up, there's Polaris. All right, so Polaris is useful in that way um, it basically tells you your latitude. So this is a helpful feature used by many wayfinders. Um, if you wanna uh, jump to any of these links when I share the slides with you, uh, you can click these little eye icons. Those are links to Stellarium. All right, so as you can see, Polaris is at different, uh, what we call altitudes from our horizon 
in the sky, depending on your latitude. All right, so you should have noticed also in the activity that there's something called altitude and azimuth. And these are the two ways to measure a location on the celestial sphere relative to an observer's horizon. So those are gonna change, right, depending on your latitude. Um, but the right ascension and declination of a star, that is fixed. That is just that star's address on the celestial sphere. Uh, the altitude changes though. And so um, it's important to know that that is the case. Um, I'm gonna skip this question. Ooh, my slides are not working well. Um, the other thing that I hope that you noticed is that the altitude of Polaris we, we saw earlier um, tells you your latitude, right? And um, you should have noticed that stars seem to circle around Polaris. So if you ever see pictures like this that indicate star trails, um, these are you know, long exposure images taken of the stars, they all circle around Polaris in the Northern Hemisphere and they circle around the, the South Celestial Pole in the south, Southern Hemisphere. Um, there is no South Star though. There's no star right next to the South Celestial Pole. Um, so there's no equivalent of Polaris down in the South. So, um, this is kind of the pattern that I hope you can sort of see from playing with Stellarium. You can see the stars appear to move around as time advances, either as the hours elapse in the night, as in this image, but also as the date changes. So um, we'll practice with, uh, with the, these ideas more next time. Um, but this is basically the idea of, you know, objects move on the sky. And it is just us noticing as human beings that objects move on the sky that caused astronomy to be, you know, this point of investigation for humans in the first place. So I hope that you're kind of similarly inspired looking at Stellarium or looking um, at the sky outside to continue your study of astronomy.